When you hear someone say, all employees must follow federal regulations concerning the I-9 Employment Eligibility Verification Form, it no doubt sounds abstract, unimportant, and certainly not interesting. But here are the facts. If you are responsible for hiring new employees, the I-9 has everything to do with you, and whether you like it or not, you are breaking federal law if you don't follow the rules. Why? Because the Department of Homeland Security takes its job of ensuring a legal workforce seriously, and they require everyone else to take their part seriously too. The DHS can fine violators as much as $2,100 per form for everything from completing a form late to an honest paperwork mistake. The moral of the story? Follow the rules. Your best is only good enough if it meets DHS standards. So, here are the regulations in a nutshell. The very first day a new hire steps foot on the job, make sure they complete their portion of the I-9, which is included in the new hire packet. Not the next day, not the day after, the very first day, it's the law. That same day, the new hire needs to give their supervisor, you, originals of ID that meets the requirements on page 3 of the I-9. Not photocopies or scans, originals. If the employee provides a List A document, such as a permanent resident card or passport, no other ID is required. Otherwise, they need to provide both a List B document and a List C document. Common acceptable combinations are a driver's license or state ID card paired with a birth certificate or social security card. Once the employee gives you their ID, you need to complete the employer portion of the I-9, Section 2, which is on page 2. You must complete your part no later than the third business day the employee is on the job, not the fourth or the fifth, not whenever you get around to it, no later than the third business day. When everyone has completed their portions, the I-9 should look like this. Page 1, Employee Handwriting Only. Page 2, Supervisor Handwriting Only. The start date on page 2 should match both payroll records and the date on page 1. Beautiful. Now, what about rehires? The requirements vary depending on what is on file from the last time the employee was hired. Best practice is to notify accounting as soon as you rehire someone so they can tell you what to do for that particular employee. Remember, action may be required the very first day the employee is on the job, so let accounting know about the rehire as soon as possible. Other things to know about completing the I-9. No whiteout allowed. If anyone makes a mistake, they should draw one line through it and write the correct information next to or above it. There are two boxes at the end of Section 1 for the employee to indicate whether or not they used a preparer or translator. It's an easy field to miss, so make sure they check one. The employee's name at the top of page 2 must match the name on page 1 exactly. The Citizenship Immigration Status field next to the name should be completed with the number of the box the employee checked on page 1. When writing the issuing authority for a piece of ID, be as specific as possible. For a driver's license, include both the state name and the name of the agency, for example, Indiana BMV. An employee may not complete their own Section 2. So, follow the rules and everything will turn out great. Don't follow the rules. And guess who's not getting a company Corvette? Happy compliance!